more outrageous rulings out of this cabal of radical left-wing Democrat judges in Washington, D.C. As you know, when I wrote the book, The Liberty Amendments, I came up with a number of amendments that I thought, through the Convention of States, we should try to adopt in order to get our Constitution, our Republic back. Because they've been eviscerated. They've been obliterated. But I want to suggest something that the Republicans in the House of Representatives could do right now. It may not be accepted by the Senate. It may not be accepted by Biden yet. But there are two ways to deal with that. Keep pounding at the door until something that seems impossible one day becomes reality. And number two, attach to every major piece of legislation wording that I'm going to discuss with you right now. Mark, what are you talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, the, the courts in the District of Columbia are runaway courts. If not all, most of the judges, that is, radical, Democrat, left-wing, in some case, Marxist lawyers, put on that black robe, are called your honor, and are given the kind of respect they do not deserve. Because they disrespect you, they disrespect defendants, they disrespect the rule of law. They are interfering in a presidential election. They are interfering in the, in the justice process. They know what they're doing. They talk to each other. It is a cabal. It is a cabal at the district court level, a.k.a. the trial level. It is a cabal, <coughs> excuse me, at the circuit court level, that is, the appellate level. Now, under our Constitution... Under our Constitution, Article 3, Section 1. Funny how I refer to the Constitution all the time, isn't it? The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court. And in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. The judges both of the Supreme and inferior courts shall hold their offices during good behavior and shall at stated times receive for their services a compensation which shall not be diminished during their continuance in office. They put that last part in there so judges wouldn't be threatened or intimidated by having their salaries reduced or removed. That's quite irrelevant here. In other words, Congress has created and does create every federal court below the Supreme Court. The Constitution actually creates the Supreme Court. Congress creates those courts. Congress also has the power to determine if those courts do or do not have judicial authority over a certain subject matter. Did you know that? Since the ratification of the Constitution, excuse me, Congress has created these various courts, these districts. There are 12 circuit districts. There are 94 trial districts. Congress created every one of them. If Congress wanted to deny authority in certain subject matter, certain subject matter jurisdiction, it has the power to do that. The Constitution gives them that power. It's a direct grant. Now you know why I'm not a former federal prosecutor. I'm a constitutional lawyer. So we have a court in Washington, D.C., the circuit court. Then we have lower courts in Washington, D.C., 12 active 
district judges, as well as judges on what they call senior status. I'm not going to go through again for you what we've talked about before here and on Fox and on Levin TV. But the majority of the judges at the trial level, the district court level, are Obama and Clinton appointees. And of those, most of them are Obama appointees. And he selected the most radical bomb throwers he possibly could. And they're now judges. Now these are flesh and blood people. These are lawyers who are picked from obscurity. And they become federal judges for life. You know, people talk about term limiting this, term limiting that. I don't necessarily disagree with them, by the way. But nobody talks about term limiting specifically the federal judges in Washington, D.C. So, number one, I want to put that on the table. That that is something we should add to a list of constitutional amendments we want. I know it's difficult. But we must term limit those judges because it is extraordinarily powerful part of our judiciary, way out of line with what the framers ever had in mind. That's number one. Number two, we have a cabal. Whenever you have a cabal, you have tyranny. And we've recognized that throughout American history. The Constitution is concerned about cabals. That's why we have separation of powers. That's why we have checks and balances. That's why we have federalism. That's why we have the Ninth Amendment, where you have individual rights as, as declared in the Declaration of, De- of Independence. That's what the Ninth Amendment's all about. People, we're not sure what the Ninth Amendment means. That's what it means. It's the connection to the Declaration. Now, if we have economic monopolies... We have antitrust laws that were passed at the beginning of the last century. I don't necessarily agree with them, but there they are. Now, what are they there for? To prevent monopolies. Now, there's no more dangerous monopoly than the monopoly of one party controlling a judicial district in this country, which is Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is the most partisan Democrat city in the United States. Whether you're talking about the ruling class or whether you're talking about the population. 94% of the population that voted, voted for Biden. You only see those numbers with Hamas. You only see those numbers in, in Russia, in China, in North Korea, in dictatorships throughout our own hemisphere. You don't see those numbers in a functioning republic. 94%? What would happen if Washington, D.C. was filled with a population of Republicans who voted 94% for Donald Trump? And Joe Biden is indicted by two grand juries in Washington, D.C. And we have a majority of Reagan and Trump appointed judges and some of them let's say are in your face radicals for the right you think there'd be squeals and hollers and all the rest from the democrat party from the media of course there would Now, since the beginning of Congress, we've had Judiciary Acts. Without a Judiciary Act, we wouldn't have any of these lower courts. And the Judiciary Act also directs the Department of Justice and prosecutors throughout the country. Sometimes it it provides for sentencing guidelines and so forth and so on. The criminal code is adopted by statute. Congress has a lot of say in this, purposely. Congress is supposed to be made up of our representatives. 
When you have what are lifetime appointed Democrats, lifetime appointed bomb throwing radical Marxist and left wing judges who are abusing their authority, who are using their positions, who are using these courtrooms and their lifetime appointments to destroy this country, to destroy our legal system, our constitutional system. To destroy the Bill of Rights, to destroy the rights of defendants, to have due process, probable cause, a joy of their peers, real peers. Then you have nothing. We have this idea of judicial review. Where's judicial review in the Constitution? Nowhere. Find it. If you find the term judicial review in the Constitution, I'll give you $5,000. Go ahead, look. Judicial review is an implied power. Somebody has to make a decision. We have these courts. There have been big books written about them trying to convince you and me that it's really a solid power. No, it's an implied power. You read the Constitution in context, you can see the judiciary is to be and was to be very weak. The Federalist Papers tell us the judiciary is and was to be very weak. These men didn't fight a revolution for judicial review and a judiciary. They fought a revolution for representative government. That's what they did. Not lifetime appointed district and circuit court judges. It's time to reform the judiciary. It's time to reform the judiciary in Washington, D.C. It's time to break up this cabal of Marxist ideologues who don't give a damn about due process and the rights of defendants if the Republicans or if his name is Donald Trump. And I sit here really appalled. Appalled, disgusted. That not a single Republican in the House of Representatives, despite all the talk, not one has been talking about this. Not one has presented a Judiciary Act, not one, that would break up the cabal in Washington, D.C. and move some of these subject matters into other jurisdictions, which would have much more balanced and fair grand jurors, much more balanced and fair trial juries, closer to 50-50 or even 70-30, but 95 to 5? And they should break up the judicial cabal in Washington, D.C. at the circuit court level, which was expanded and packed by Obama and Reid. And the D.C. court level. Congress shouldn't sit on its hands. Certainly not the Republicans. And pretend there's nothing they can do about this. At least start pushing the agenda. The agenda being a just and fair and balanced judiciary. That's not what we have in Washington, D.C. You cannot, cannot get a fair trial. It is impossible. When you have judges like Beryl Howe, Chudkin, Jackson, a long list of reprobates. And that proposed legislation be it should be attached to everything. Spending bills, debt limit bills, every damn bill. And fight for it. Because you're fighting for the country. Break up that court in Washington, D.C. The district courts and the circuit court. Take authority away from them and give it to other parts of the country, other jurisdictions, other judges who know what their real role is, and other citizens in a more balanced and objective community.